That's awesome. Absolutely awesome. All right, guys, I have the EC1500 all plugged in and everything is ready to go. I have my throttle control, ailerons, elevator, rudder, and flaps. And I won't be using it for this flight, but the bay door still works. So, yeah. I'm going to be taking off with safe and then... Um, as soon as I take off, I'll uh, toggle it off. Ooh, that rudder is kind of weak without safe. Okay, I'll just take it off. All right. Taking off! All right, the EC1500 in the air. All right, I'm just gonna take off safe now. All right. It looks like it's pitching up a bit, and I think it's because our normally these twin-powered planes like to gain a lot of lift. So let me just trim that down. I think we're good now. Let me just do a full throttle low pass. All right. This elevator is super sensitive without safe, so. I think after this flight, I'm going to be uh, putting some expo on it. All right, let's see if we can do a loop. Oh yeah, I barely have to put any elevator to do that kind of loop. This also just looks wonderful in the air. Let's see it's inverted flying. Okay. I think I do I'm gonna do a full inverted pass when I get to the trees here. It'd be really cool if this plane had retracts. That's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Let's come towards us and start doing a figure eight. Apply a nice amount of rudder for that smooth turn. There we go. It's very, very stable, I can say that. Once I fix the elevator's trim, very stable. Now let's test its flight with flaps. This is level one. You can see it slows down very nicely. Yeah. And this is level two. And it slows down even more. I programmed this to fly for around four minutes and I'm I just hit my one minute mark. So I have like around, yeah, 40 seconds of the time or so. I'm gonna start landing now. Let me slow down for my approach. This one might be a bit difficult to land because of the way the landing gears are set up. I put some flaps. Nice approach. Yeah. 
screechy wheels. I love that. So that was my flight on the E-Flight EC-1500. This thing just flew flawlessly. Uh, I will say the elevator was a tad bit too strong for me on uh, safe not being toggled. So um, I think after this video, I'm going to be just uh, tuning in some expo for it. And another minor thing that won't affect the flight at all, uh, with, with safe, if you're going to be taxing this with safe, I the, the rudder is very, very weak on it. So... I think for taxing, you should just turn that off. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you for tuning in to John's RC. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Beautiful flight, John. Absolutely beautiful flight. Hey, guys. Welcome back. I'm Eric. And I'm John. And welcome back to John's RC. Hope you guys enjoyed John's uh, flight on this beautiful EC-1500. Now that John had a chance to fly it, uh, we want to talk to you more about the plane. So as usual, John will talk to you guys about the specs of the plane. And then I'll talk to you guys about the build. And then I'll hand it back to John to give us uh, his feedback on the actual flight characteristics of the plane. So why don't you start first, bud? So this is the E-Flight EC-1500. I'm pretty sure that they call this model that because it's an E-Flight cargo plane and it's got a wingspan of roughly 1500. So it has an exact wingspan of 1524 millimeters and it has a length of 1190 millimeters. It is a bind and fly model so that means you're going to have to supply yourself with your own transmitter. My transmitter of choice is going to be the Spectrum DX8. Your own flight battery, the flight battery that we used for the flight was a Venom 4 cell 5000 milliamp hour battery pack. And yeah. As you can see, this is a twin-powered plane, so that means there's going to be two 40-amp ESCs, and each of these motors is a 650 kV brushless outfitter motor. The motors are turning these uh, five-bladed 10x8E uh, electric props, and yeah, this model is six-channel, so that means you're going to get your throttle control, your aileron control, elevators, rudder, your flaps, you see here, and uh, the cargo bay door, which is really cool. So yeah, this model also does support safe select, and if you want to include that, you're going to have to uh, need an extra channel on your transmitter. So now my dad will talk to you about the build. All right, thanks, John. Hey guys, so this is a beautiful large plane. Um, but the build was actually quite easy. Now there are some things that you guys should know. So installing the rudder was the first thing that you do. So first you install the vertical stabilizer. And basically this is a, a two screw job, one over here and one over here. Now obviously you will have to screw on, or not screw on, but you'll have to connect the servo wires um, from the servo to the extension cable that's inside the fuse. Okay. Then afterwards uh, there is a, a stabilizer bar in between these two elevators. So you basically connect the bar together, okay? And then these guys, they literally just snap into place, right? So I didn't have to use any kind of glue and there are no screws that go from the bottom top. There's actually a release button right underneath here if you guys wanna pull them back out again. So again, you just install that stabilizer bar, you squeeze the two halves together and then they basically snap in place. Um, there are some things that you guys should know about the wing. Um, first thing is, as you notice that there's there's three control surfaces over here. There's the aileron, uh, and then there's the flap, and then there's this middle guy right here. So you can configure this plane either for a more scale flight, and what I mean by that is you connect this control surface with the flap so you get a more scaled flight. Or, according to the website, this scale plane can actually do some serious 3D. And of course, when John saw that, he wanted us to configure the plane for a more sport flying and more 3D flying. So we basically connected this middle portion right here 
to the aileron so we'll have an easier time with 3D maneuvers. Uh, the wings themselves are actually just held on by these uh, these four thumb screws right here, okay? So that's uh, pretty easy. So again, you do have to configure what you want to do with this middle control surface. Uh, the other interesting thing about this plane is uh, the propellers um, did not come installed. So you do have to install the props. And just please take a note, okay? There is a left prop and then there is a right prop and they are not uh, interchangeable, right? So as you notice, John, if you can just give me a tiny bit of throttle, okay? You'll notice that the props are turning towards the plane, right? So you have to choose the right prop for uh, you know the the right surface so the left prop goes on this side the right prop goes on this side unfortunately it doesn't actually say left and right you just have to know that this one here right this is the leading edge and it has to turn that way and this is the leading edge and it has to turn this way and not only that the spinners are also not interchangeable so there is a left spinner and then there is a right spinner and of course they don't put l here and they don't put r here so you basically just have to play around with it and see which one actually fits because it really only goes one way. So the way that you install this, again, this is separated, this is separated. So first you install the, the spinner back plates, right? And then you install the prop adapter and then you install the prop and then you install the nut and then you install this spinner and then you screw it down with this. I know it looks like there's a lot, but it's, it's really not that difficult. If you guys have installed props before, it's the same concept, okay? Um, I did want to show you guys uh, the inside of the fuse, if you can take a look at this, okay? As you can see here, this does have a pretty large capacity. So right now we're using a 4-cell 5000, but I think the manual says you can go even higher than a 4-cell 5000 yeah. uh, battery on this one here. Um, with this battery, and as you can see, I have it pushed up right, uh, right against the, uh, you know, the, the nose wheel servo um, on takeoff. Was it a little bit tail? Uh, I mean, uh, pitching down or pitching uh, up? It was uh, pitching up a bit. Okay, so it was still pitching up even with this 5,000 battery, but you you were able to control that using just some set of trims, right? Yes. Okay. All right, so guys, that again. Um, it's not a difficult build. There are a lot of things that you do have to do, especially for the wing. Now, again, uh, this beautiful plane can fly in scale mode, okay? Um, and it can also fly in sport and in 3D mode. And John is a sport slash 3D flyer. Of course, he's gonna take the scale plane and it's gonna fly it in that mode. Uh, so John, now that you've had the chance to fly this thing already, why don't you give us your feedback? I mean, is this something that uh, a beginner can fly maybe or no so i definitely think that if you get some practice on uh, some sort of simulator uh you'll definitely be able to fly this it's very very maneuverable and it can be very forgiving but uh if if you're new i would definitely recommend that you configure this control surface in the middle to the flaps instead so it's not as twitchy i will say initially on takeoff it did pitch up a bit, so I had to put in like plus 22 trim for it to get out to get it uh, balanced. And I saw that you did that landing pretty smoothly. How was the landing on this yeah. plane? I thought that landing this would be hard because of how the wheels were designed, but it was actually very, very easy. And another thing I want to note, uh, definitely do put some expo on the elevator if you're not used to like really twitchy control surfaces. Uh, I wasn't used to it. I, as soon as I took off, I noticed that it was like pitching up because I was applying too much elevator. So I got used to it and I did put in some expo after the flight. But yeah, it's a very, very maneuverable, maneuverable plane. It can do some 3D. I was in the flight video, I was able to do my loops, my rolls, my inverted, all of that. And it's just a beautiful plane overall. But yeah. All right, so my assumption is it's not for the absolute beginner, but uh, if somebody has some four channel experience, then they can probably tackle this plane because this plane does have AS3X and safe select. Yes. Now obviously for the 3D mode, you obviously have to turn uh, safe select off so you can uh, invert the plane. But yeah, so that's pretty much it guys on the EC1500, it's a beautiful plane. 
So thanks for tuning in to John's RC. And if you're new to this channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye guys. Alright guys, we'll see you in the next video. Bye now.